So now let's see how do you create this connection once or how do you write this code once and then you can use it in all of the methods. And basically we can do the injection there, the dependency injection. Okay, but uh, let's let's see this. So let's create a function and I will say get db as a function name and the session object which you are creating will do that here once. One of the method accessing this and when they want the database connection, they should be able to get it and then they should close the connection. So of course we have to also close the connection, right? And the closing of the connection should be done after they have used it. So in that case, we have to use something called yield db. And then after this, you will close the connection. So you will say db.close. So basically this is where we are creating it. This is where we are waiting for the others to use it and then we'll close the connection. But it might happen, something may go wrong with this. And even if something goes wrong or if it is not going wrong, I want to make sure that we are closing the connection. So if you want to achieve that, we'll have to say try and we'll put the close in the finally block so that it doesn't matter if something goes wrong here or not, it will close the connection just to make sure because resources are very important. So what we are trying to do here is we'll, every time someone wants to use the database, they will inject this object or this method there. Now, first of all, what is dependency injection is, so let's say if there's a method here, which is uh, get all products. Now get all products needs the object of DB. So basically they want the session object. So instead of creating the object here, what we can do is we can tell, hey, I want this dependency because I can't work without this DB. So I want you to give me this dependency. So the fast API will inject this object okay that is called dependency injection but then this get all products needs to ask for it it will not give you by default you have to ask for it now how do you ask for it so it's simple you say i want db of type session and you have to make sure that this is not session which we have created here and there's something we have to import from sql alchemy so i will say import sql alchemy dot orm and okay so from import you need to get session so we want db of type session. So you have to say this depends because this is where you are specifying that it depends on something and it depends upon get db. So basically it will inject it here. And since we are using dependency injection, we have to also import that in the fast API. So it's a depends here or maybe after fast API, anyway it works. So let's go come back and we got it. So we got db session equal to, it depends upon this particular method, which is get db. So this is how basically you inject dependencies. Now, once you have db, you, you don't have to create this. You can directly use it. So this line we can avoid now. I can directly use it. So how exactly we are going to use it? Now I will create products or maybe I could say products from db. So it's a db products equal to, and we'll use a db connection dot and we have to pass a query which we have done before but this time instead of getting the count i want to get uh, all the details but of which type so it's a database models dot product dot all this will give me all the products and this is what we need to return now so db underscore products simple right uh, now once we have done this it's time to test it on the server so we'll go back to the browser and refresh this once and now i'll say try it out i want to fetch all the products and this should give me all the products but then i know you're not sure is it coming from database or is it just coming from uh the thing here what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the change in the database let's see if that works so to change it i will say update uh, table name is product set i want to set one thing let's say i want to change this table to a uh, laptop table so set name is equal to laptop table where ID is equal to what is ID six. Hope this will work. Yeah, it, it worked, updated. And now if I say select star from product execute and you can see this updated, right? Table date, uh, table. Okay. We, what I've updated, what's wrong with me? Uh, but okay. I should have said laptop table or something i said table table i need to watch the video again <laughs> it doesn't matter right something has changed now let's verify that in the servers if i execute this once more execute and you can see it stays table table so yeah we are right so this data is coming from database so yeah so we have done it so data is coming from database things are working out i'm happy i hope you're happy
about this and similarly we can do things for get product by id as well so instead of getting it from the list we have to get it from database so what i'm going to do is this thing here this will change because now we are not using a for loop because for loop will iterate from the elements i'll be saying product equal to and this product will have in fact you know everywhere i should mention db product so that we'll know db product equal to db dot query we have to fire the query and we'll say which for which one so models dot product now you know dot now things will change here because here we are saying all here we have to say one we have to, we have to get only one not all but which one to specify that we'll use something called a filter so in the select query as well we if you want to filter the elements you basically use a var clause this is how you do the var clause you say filter and in this filter you specify for which particular table so you do that with the help of product you don't have to mention the table name you use the model itself and from the model you will compare the id so the id should match with the id so the id from the table should match with the id which you are getting here and if you find one get the first one so of course this will generate only one but in case if you find multiple things then you will pick up the first one okay uh, we have to make one more change because you can see db is giving error here because we are not added dependency so i can just copy this line because this is what we are going to use everywhere now we just have to add the dependency now once you got the product now we don't have to compare that here we, we have done that in the filter the only thing i want to check is if this product exists okay if this product exists return the product and this should not be outside right this should be in line if this product exists return the product otherwise you can return product not found okay so even for one this is working now uh how do i verify go back to the swagger and uh, since we have made changes let's refresh this and let's try to get one and we'll try to get this sixth one itself id6 execute it should return table table yeah we got table table things are working out cool okay uh, maybe if you try to fetch let's say nine which is not which does not exist it will return product not found so finally we are doing operations with database so we have done for the fetching let's do for the post put and delete in the next video